So today I'll be presenting about uh, Python for .NET or .NET for Python. So my name is Denis Zuhiarov. Uh, I work as a senior consultant at Wood Group in Intelligent Operations Group. Um, I'm also Python.NET Core developer. We, we have uh, several of them. Uh, my uh, handle nickname on online is Dan from Ufa. Uh, you can find me on Stack Overflow, GitHub, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, whichever channel you prefer. So I, I am a, my background is mostly actually not programming, but I, I do have experience with a Python, C Sharp, Mathematica, VBA, MATLAB, Pascal back in the days. So also check out my, some of my talks about uh, Pyoma and Excel Wings. So let me start with uh, some comparison plots about uh, .NET languages and Python. So this is a programming community index. Uh, this is like ranking of pro programming languages. And you can see that uh, Python and C Sharp are very popular, qu quite popular. They stand four, four or five uh, uh, in the ranking. And, um, uh, but of course, uh, I also looked at Stack Overflow. On Stack Overflow, actually, uh, Python is getting a lot more popular. Uh, this is another index, and here, if we zoom in, uh, C Sharp and Python right in the same region. So very popular languages. And this is another index also about the same popularity. So what is uh, Python for .NET? Um, this is a package that gives a nearly seamless integration with the .NET, uh, CLR runtime, and it's a powerful uh, scripting uh, tool for .NET developers. And so it works in both directions. And it runs on uh, Windows, Linux, OS X, and most recently it also runs on Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL. Uh, Python uh, 2.6 to 3. Point uh, 2.7 to 3.6. Um, so all major C Python versions. There is some work being done on running it on PyPy and also .NET Core, but it's still in work in progress. So the history of the project is that it was developed by Brian Lloyd at Zob Corporation in 2003. Actually, it was developed before Iron Python even. Uh, currently, it has three active developers. So that's uh, Victor, he works at Intel. Uh, Benedict, he's, uh, he works at uh, Statcraft and me. So I guess uh, one disclaimer, um, this talk does not represent the views of my employer. I work at, uh, I use this library at work, but uh, I will be talking about the open source usage of this library. Um, there is a lot of uh, use of this library, uh, which is not visible online. It's a uh, closed source. So this is a, a simple description of what Python net is. So there are two runtimes we can see C Python and CLR runtime, and PythonNet is just a bridge. It, it just passes types and methods back and forth. So what is PythonNet good for? So you can reuse existing .NET assemblies, DLLs, and APIs from Python without writing wrapper code, boilerplate code. You can write extensions for Python in .NET, also, you can embed Python engine in .NET app. This is a, what I call dark matter enterprise software, where there is a lot of uh, C sharp code out there, which uh, the, it's not open source, but they do like to use a lot of this uh, 
uh, nice Python libraries from SciPy, PyDataStacks, and this is a very easy way to integrate. So reuse any Python libraries from .NET, like I mentioned. Okay, so this is some statistics. Since 2016, the library was downloaded over, uh, it's reaching 100K downloads, 100,000 downloads. Actually, it's more if we include all the other channels, which I will talk later. So this is how the project looks on GitHub. We have um, over 700 stars, um, issues, several hundred, several hundred pull requests. So the project is tested on uh, Travis CI, AppWare CI. There is um, coverage uh, for it. Uh, we also test it uh, on Coverity for any defect. Okay, uh, the license is MIT. It used to be Zoop, and nobody know, knew what Zoop is, so we, we had to switch to MIT uh, with permission from over 95% of contributors. And uh, we're, uh, we have a versioning scheme, uh, so semantic versioning scheme, uh, runs on all major Python versions. We ha also have a Stack Overflow uh, tag, and there are almost, uh, uh, so we're reaching about 200 questions now on Stack Overflow. We also have two chats channels, Slack and Gitter. So um, I'll just mention what is PythonNet used right now. So this is a Quant Connect is an open source uh, C Sharp, F Sharp algorithmic trading platform. Of course, you can find more projects in the link I gave. Um, so this is a financial uh, trading, uh, algorithmic trading platform, and they recently added Python uh, support using Python Net. So this is another example. This is a chemical process simulator, which runs on Windows, Linux, iOS, Android, and it uses Python Net for using some optimization libraries. This is a, actually a quite different use of Python Net. Uh, this is abstraction over WebView components on all major platforms. It's called PyWebView. This is sort of like Electron, uh, but for Python. And this is one of example applications built using uh, this PyWebView. Okay, this one is even larger. Uh, this is Toga. Uh, this is the UI widget toolkit. Uh, uh, it's also called Pi, uh, Pi B, Beware. It's a project by uh, Russell uh, McKay, if I pronounce his name correctly. He is a uh, uh, former director of uh, uh, Python uh, uh, Django Software Foundation. And so for Windows, it uses Python Net under the hood, but it's a cross-platform UI uh, widget toolkit uh, that runs on even mobile uh, <laughs> applications. So this is another example. This is a, uh, this is a library for loading um, uh, the DLLs with other bitness, so 32-bit to 64-bit and vice versa interrupt using Python Net. And this is used by uh, laboratories, government laboratories in New Zealand, apparently. It's all open source. This is all open source usage I'm showing right now. So this is another one I found recently. This is, they claim that this is AI platform and they claim that they are faster than TensorFlow. You can find it online, check it out. They use Python Net. So now, of course, Python Net is used in a lot of uh, commercial applications. For example, uh, one company is uh, Oxford Instruments, uh, used by banking, investment, energy, automation industries. Okay, so I have a quick question. 
uh, before I go into details, how many used Iron Python, PyWin32, CompTimes, uh, PythonNet in the auditory? Okay, so probably a third of the auditory. Um, okay, so installation and deployment options. We have uh, packages uh, that you can install using uh, a pip, PIP. PIP install Python net. It installs wheels, so it's a binary package. On Windows, on Linux, we can do that. It builds using the installed version of Mono and other dependencies. The same on uh, um, Mac OS, it, it's not wheels. Uh, now we also have con conda packages. This was uh, external contribution. Uh, for .NET users, there is a NuGet packages. Uh, so you can do NuGet, uh, uh, you can use NuGet com command install package, Python net. This is example, um, and uh, you can use it from .NET applications. There are some quirks with the .NET, uh, so that's documented in issue tracker. Also, we provide Docker uh, images. So Docker images is a very nice way because it, uh, everything is set up in, on Linux uh, Mono environment. You can do both embedding and extending. You don't have to worry about uh, installation, all dependencies. Also, WinPython uh, distribution for Windows comes with Python Net uh, included. So now uh, another nice option is uh, you can actually deploy easily uh, applications built with uh, Python Net using uh, PyInstaller or CXFreex. And most recently, Briefcase from PyB project I mentioned. So Briefcase makes MSI installers for your uh, Py Python Net apps that use Python Net. Um, so the instructions are very simple, PyInstaller, Python app with .NET.py, and uh, Pyth uh, both PyInstaller and CXFreeze come with built-in hooks for Python Net. Oh, and this is a, a one, one very complicated uh, example of standalone uh, application built. It's a mono game uh, engine uh, app. Uh, it's a set console is a is a retro style a game engine built by one of Microsoft employees, and um, it uses, uh, so uh, there is one example using Python Net, how to build a simple snake game, and it's packaged in this uh, issue tracker. There is a description. So uh, with the Python Net uh, build, there actually comes a lot of, uh, nice utilities and sample apps. So one of them is and Python executable. It works cross platform. And this is a console app, which is an example of CPython embedded in .NET. And also this is a Python interactive prompt. So what this does is it, uh, um, it actually uh, embeds the CLR runtime and it looks like a regular Python in, um, interpreter. You can see I do import system, and system is .NET namespace. You can see I put .NET, uh, I'll put the .NET version there. So, so there are also demo apps. There is WinForms apps which runs on .NET and Mono, and I actually found recently that uh, it runs on uh, Windows uh, Linux subsystem with a X server, and uh, but WinForms is a sort of legacy, and uh, right now the desktop applications are developed uh, with WPF on Windows, and so we have also have uh, um, examples for this. So WPF is very nice; it comes with Visual Designer and XAML and you can use Visual Studio uh, Designer, uh, and also you can even debug XAML. So this is a, the example I mentioned. So this is Mona embedded in CPython, running in Linux subsystem on Windows with X 
11 server and you can see this is an example app and so all I did is I just went to this bash windows shell import CLR of course I had to install it <laughs> import CLR import system you can see it shows the uh, platform as Unix but it's actually running inside Windows. It's weird actually how it runs. And I just import one of the demo apps and you can see the output. So uh, I have here a demo, maybe I'll show later if I, we have enough time. Actually, let me try it. So this is a, actually a, an editor built with the Python net, but it's using WinForms. So you can type here and save. And this is just an example so that people can test it out. Uh, there is another app here. So this is more modern, this is WPF. It looks much nicer, resolution is much nicer, and it has a much better rendering. So this is just for me to go back. Okay, so we also have very nice Visual Studio ID experience. Uh, the builds are using MS build, and it's actually driven by setup tools in setup.py. So the, the builds are necessary to pick um, the correct Python runtime, all the flags, so it's all set by this uh, build. So when you do uh, PIP install Python net, if it's from source, it will uh, use that. Uh, so IntelliSense, uh, there is also IntelliSense, but this requires switching between environments currently. Um, so you can do even IntelliSense on uh, .NET uh, assemblies, but y you have to switch to Iron Python. Testing, so we have unit tests, uh, extensive unit tests, and these are both for the C Sharp side and the Python side. And this can be uh, run from Visual Studio. Although recently we switched to PyTest, and th this part doesn't run yet in, in PV Python tools for Visual Studio. There is open issue for that. So debugging, debugging is actually debugging. You can do mixed mode cross language debugging. You can do remote attached debugging cross-platform debugging, all this works with Python net. So you can debug actually from uh, C-sharp to Python and back and forth. And you can even debug if you want into C-Python runtime. So I'll show some examples later and there are some demos in the end of presentation. There is also interactive C-sharp uh, shell in uh, uh, Visual Studio, which is very nice for uh, exploring the uh, Python runtime. So but it's limited to 32 bit, so I'm using script CS and IC Sharp for 64 bit uh, C Python interpreters. So, this is just a look of a, a solution explorer. So, you can see we have a, a few projects here. Uh, there are three projects just related to testing uh, Python embedding test, Python test, tests. And you can see there, are, there is a Python project highlighted. Uh, all the rest is C-sharp. So uh, Python net is implemented in C-sharp, but it's using C, uh, C Python C API under the hood. There is console app. This is NPython executable I mentioned before. CLR module is actually compiles to CLR.PYD, which you can do import CLR. Uh, Python runtime is the main code, and that's where the hooks are uh, handled between uh, Python and .NET. So the, uh, I'll skip this for now. Um, so uh, if we have time later, I'll show demo. So disclaimer, 
uh, Python Net doesn't implement uh, uh, Python as first class CLR language. For that, we have Iron Python. So this is just an interop. Uh, another cool project is uh, Pigeon. Uh, this is JIT compilation of uh, C Python bytecode to IL bytecode, and this is completely compatible with C Python. Although the speed is uh, not good yet, it's a work in progress. So getting started. Uh, so normally Python Net works just as is, uh, except .NET specific bits. In in that case, it's the way it should work in C Sharp. Uh, also for compatibility with I, uh, Iron Python community, we try to match the syntax as much as possible with Iron Python. A good way to start is you just explore .NET usage interactively, uh, and we'll do this in this tutorial. So uh, if you get stuck, there are a lot of unit tests. You can explore demos. Um, one problem we have, we don't have very good documentation, not, not much documentation, <laughs> I should admit. Importing modules. So this is how importing works. You just do import CLR, and then you can import uh, CLR namespaces just as regular Python packages. In this case, I'm importing system collections. Um, so types from any loaded assembly may be imported to load an assembly use at reference. So if you need to um, use specific assemblies, uh, .NET assemblies, uh, you just uh, add reference to that assembly. Now, if it's located in custom directory, it will be imported. Um, um, you need to first append it to system path. So uh, you can use .NET classes, structs, interfaces, delegates. So uh, this is how uh, you create, uh, for example, from system.drawing import point. So uh, this, is, this is just a regular Python syntax. So now <laughs> there is a lot of issues with uh, overloading, and for that we have um, workarounds. So method overloading is very complicated, especially when we are de dealing with a cross-language code. Um, so in most cases, uh, uh, Python for that net can determine the correct constructor if you're initializing uh, classes. Um, but uh, in some cases, you may want to specify the specific uh, explicit constructor. And for that, we have this overload attrib attribute. Uh, so you can basically specify the types you can see here, char in 32, and this will use a specific overload if the arguments are somehow um, not um, explicit, uh, implicit, ambiguous. So you can also use generic types. So, uh, so here is an example. Basically, we're creating a hash table dictionary, and you can specify the types using uh, indexing scheme of uh, C Python. So this is using uh, like a square, uh, square brackets indexing. Uh, so. So you can also uh, use Python types if there is a matching .NET type. So now you can also subclass .NET, uh, .NET types in Python and uh, add additional capabilities in Python. And you can see example uh, demo apps for how this is done. So now, uh, we can also use fields and properties. So fields and properties are very common in C Sharp. They are just regular uh, attributes. Uh, now, indexer is uh, um, 
very interesting concept in C Sharp. We also have it very similar thing in Python. So, uh, for example, here I am creating a, an indexer uh, support. Um, so for that, uh, I will have to load something special, and this is called CLR Magic. So uh, when you do PIP install CLR Magic, this actually loads into Jupyter Notebook um, <coughs> the um, kernel magic that you can use C Sharp code, .NET code, uh, directly from Python kernel. Uh, this is very similar to other uh, cell magics, uh, like there is one for Julia, for R, and so on. And so we built one for .NET, why not? This was built uh, partially by um, Xavier Dupre, uh, who is co-author of this talk, and he is a Microsoft um, researcher uh, in Paris. I just packaged it in the PyPI package. So, uh, so I'm creating here an indexer. So this is actually actual um, C sharp code that's running inside Jupyter notebook in a Python kernel, and you can see I can um, basically what indexer does is let me show you. So what it does is you instantiate an indexer. You can assign uh, IDX1, 5 equal to ABC, and then you can index it either by ABC or 5. And if the index is not available, it puts an A. This is very handy. This is sort of like order a dictionary in Python. So using methods, uh, this behave as normal Python method, methods. Uh, there is some difference um, if you have static or versus instance methods. So this is just example of using .NET methods. Oh, okay, now you can also do help on uh, .NET uh, um, object. You can see here I'm doing help on environment and it generates this pretty large document, so you can explore this document. Uh, so the way it works is in, it introspects the .NET uh, object for any um, metadata that can be grabbed and put into help. So overloaded and generic methods. We already talked a little bit about this, uh, so um, like I mentioned, there is overload. Uh, let's show some syntax here. So, uh, so we can basically generate uh, this, um, this uh, here I'm, making a generic method of type T and now using it from Python. So you can see it correctly grabs the types. I can uh, use generic method uh, of int or of string and it correctly outputs the types. So exception handling is also very exceptional, very good. <laughs> so you can raise and catch managed exceptions just the same you would in per Python exceptions. So you see here I'm using a .NET exception and catch it from Python. Delegates and events, uh, I'll skip this because last time I gave this during meetup, uh, I saw some sleepy people. <laughs> <laughs> using arrays, so the type System array is the base type for all arrays in .NET. You can use this in Python just like regular arrays. So this is the syntax. So I am creating array of type int with elements one and two, and uh, I'm converting into a list, and this is the output. So list is a Python list. So uh, all the Python se sequence protocols are supported on .NET uh, arrays. You can see I can get the items, get uh, even with negative syntax, 
uh, get length, iterate over elements. Multi-dimensional arrays are also supported. So this is uh, index, uh, so this is very similar to NumPy arrays, uh, but it works on C-sharp arrays as well. So collections, um, if the .NET collection implements are enumerable, then you can use standard iterator uh, uh, for in uh, syntax with the Python. Oh, in this case, what you see is I'm grabbing all assemblies loaded into this current um, app domain. Uh, this is dot, .NET concept for current runtime environment. And it shows all the assemblies that, that are loaded currently. So COM objects, although this is very legacy COM objects, they are used, still used a lot. Um, for example, Excel provides good COM support and uh, other Office products. And COM is a very easy language to interrupt uh, between different languages. Although in Windows 10, there is now WinRT, and it's still in very active development. We'll see what happens. But for COM support, there is very basic support. Um, so you can do early binding. Uh, so for early binding, there is standard uh, Microsoft tools. For late, uh, uh, late time, uh, late binding, dynamic late binding, uh, the, we still have to have some boilerplate code because it uses, there is special handling in .NET for uh, late binding on COM objects. So type conversions wo works very straightforward. There are some uh, gotchas. Uh, so strings, all strings are Unicode. Then, um, so if it finds compatible .NET type, it converts from Python and back. Um, so some types are not, are not actually, there is no direct mapping. For example, in, there is no built-in Python type for int32 and in 64, actually integers. Uh, integers are mapped uh, like that, but uh, it's more complicated. In Python, uh, integers are, um, they don't have size limit. Now, um, so system decimal is example here given. So that's, there is no direct mapping yet, although there is one branch where we have support for it. Uh, decimal types are still different between Python and uh, .NET. In .NET, the precision is set and is not configurable. In Python, it's configurable. So another big part difference is value types versus reference types and boxing. So le let's give some example here. So uh, you can see this syntax will not work like item 0.x equal to 1. This will not work. The C-sharp developers would expect this to work, but um, there is some special things going on in C-sharp, and this can be reproduced in Python. So the way this has to be worked around is you have to first assign items zero to something and then do dot x on it. So, so the, this is correct way to do it. So I'm doing item x equal uh, item zero equal to item. Okay. So there is, uh, this is still a problem on C sharp side sometimes. You have to take care of this in, even in C sharp. Okay, embedding. So now let's go to the other side. So you can actually embed uh, a Python uh, runtime in uh, .NET. Uh, so there is uh, support for uh, major Python uh, objects, PyObject, PyList, PyDict, PyTuple. Um, so uh, and Python executable is a good way to explore how this is used. But let's give some examples. So at a very high level, uh, you reference python.runtime.dll in your build environment. Then you can call Python engine initialize. 
and uh, this initializes the Python engine, and you can import modules. Now, there is a, a simplified syntax we have, pi.import name, and this actually takes care of um, complicated stuff as uh, global interpreter lock, which I'll tell later a little bit. So, so all your calls to Python should 99% uh, of time be <laughs> Uh, w within pi.gil blocks. So this ensure, ensures that you hold the global interpreter lock when you are calling some uh, methods into Python runtime. Uh, and uh, anything you do with Python runtime, should, you should hold the gil. So Python is not free threaded, uh, the C Python. And although Iron Python uh, does have support for so there is no global interpreter lock in Iron Python, but uh, in Python, there, in C Python, there is, and so you have to be very careful to, when you're de dealing with global interpreter lock. That's why we provide convenience functions. Uh, uh, on the lower level, uh, there is. A, um, okay, so yeah, let's skip this. So um, here I'm calling NumPy using uh, uh, .NET. Uh, so you can use uh, lists, uh, .NET lists to call NumPy. Now uh, here I'm calling SymPy from .NET. So I can solve equations using SymPy in .NET. So actually what you have just seen is Python embedded in Python using Python .NET. We need to go deeper. So this is incep inception. Um, so uh, this is a small example to demonstrate this. So I have some uh, uh, TensorFlow example here. So you can call TensorFlow. Uh, this is somebody uh, from Intel who did this. OK, this is, uh, this is a demo of uh, mixed mode cross-language debugging. Um, so uh, it's also available in Wiki. So basically when you attach, you just select the corresponding engines, which is native, manage it, and Python. And then you can step between Python and .NET code, and it, it even shows up in the call stack. <coughs> Uh, now, this is, okay, looks like uh, I ran out of power. Hey, th thanks, to, uh, Dennis. Uh, so I'll open up for questions. Anybody has any questions uh, that they want to ask? Yes. Let me take the mic. I think let's start with you. Uh, so th for the Python gill management, uh, is it only applicable to the low-level uh, APIs, or does all the high-level, like dynamic stuff, does it also have to be done under GIL, or does it take care of it by itself if it needs to? So uh, the GIL has to be. So the question was, is GIL handled on both? Uh, does GIL have to be handled on both high-level and low-level manually? Yes. Is that the question? Uh, pretty much. So just to give an example specifically, uh, suppose I take a Python collection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it gets wrapped, and I just return it to some random code that doesn't know that it's a Python collection, and it starts to integrate again. Right? At this point, is it going to break because the gear is not held, or is it going to magically you know, take care of it somehow? Uh, so uh, the gear right now, the gear is not managed for the user uh, in Python net, so all the calls have to be wrapped with pi.gil. Although we're uh, thinking about uh, enabling this optionally, uh, like with a global flag maybe. Um, now, um, um, the plus side is that actually some people run in a multi-threaded environment, so uh, they want explicit management of gil. 
So that's why we have it like that right now. So th there is support for multi-threaded uh, um, running of uh, Python net. So, uh, but it's not documented. There, it's l like there is an issue tracker and there are some pull requests. Uh, people use it basically in multi-threaded code. Okay. Okay. Uh, th thank you very much, everyone. Uh, so I think you can ask offline. Great. Thank you.